So before we begin the guide, I'm gonna give you guys a quick character introduction. So how you play Heihachi is by being right at the opponent's face. Among the three Mishimas, I would say that Heihachi has the most sticky offense out of the three. He has plenty of moves that only put him at a very light frame disadvantage on block. Light frame disadvantage meaning that Heihachi has a lot of moves that are at around minus 3 at worst on block. Because the frame disadvantage is so light, Heihachi doesn't really lose much of his offensive momentum. So for example, if the opponent wants to do a slow move, Heihachi can still challenge that with a fast move, like his jabs for example. Or if the opponent wants to do something that will beat Heihachi's jabs which is probably their own jabs, Heihachi still has the option to step or backdash away. Or he can even just parry the opponent's jab which rewards him with a launch. And should the opponent choose to respect, Heihachi has tools to keep applying pressure. What sets him apart from the two other Mishimas which are Kazuya and Devil Jin is one is that Heihachi doesn't have a crouch dash 50-50. This is mainly because he doesn't have a hell sweep that instantly trips the opponent on the first hit. And two, Heihachi doesn't really have safe low pokes. While Kazuya has his stature kick and Devil Jin has his down back too, Heihachi slows when block will get him launched every time. But he makes up for his bad lows by having plenty of awesome mids, and you will see more of these as we learn each and every one of his tools. So let us begin. So let's start the guide first off with the standing punishers. For 10 frames, Heihachi can do two options. First option being 112, which does 25 damage. This one is my recommended 10 frame punisher because of the guaranteed knockdown or wall splat if done at the wall. However, you must be careful to not get this block because this is launch punishable at minus 17. The other option is 122, which does 2 points more damage at 27. But this one doesn't cause a knockdown, but rather you get plus 4 frame advantage. So for 12 frames, Seiyachi has two options again. First option, we have forward 1 plus 2, the headbutt. The headbutt on hit guarantees a quarter circle forward 2 or a no man thunder god fist. The quarter circle forward 2 is the staple follow-up, while the Omen Thunder God Fist will require more execution. The forward 1 plus 2 headbutt, however, is a high, so it can't be used to punish moves that recover crouching. So to cover moves that recover crouching, Heihachi can do instead is 1 plus 2. Now this doesn't guarantee a follow-up because they can easily escape by holding back as they hit the ground. However, if they don't escape, then Heihachi can run up and do the down force stomp. And now we move on to 13 frames. Heihachi has his Twin Pistons down forward 1-2. Now this one is a very good punisher because of the superior range and the wall splat that it gives. On block, this forces crouch and is minus 13, so you have to be careful with characters that have 13 frame while standing launchers. So for 14 frames, Heihachi has plenty of options again. First, Heihachi has back 3 free. This one only knocks down and only does 39 damage, which is about the same as the other Punisher forward 1 plus 2 into quarter circle forward 2. But the only difference is that because they end up face down feet away after this move, it's possible to get some Okizemi, and we will talk about this later. The alternative Punisher back 3 2 can also be used in case frame advantage is preferred more than the knockdown. On hit, this puts Heihachi at a whopping plus 8. And of course, if you're really feeling yourself with your execution, the other very difficult to do 14 frame Punisher is of course the almighty Electric Wind Godfist, or otherwise known as EWGF, or simply Electric. The key here is to not input the Electric as early as you can, but rather the very first forward input of the Electric has to be timed correctly so that it falls perfectly into the very first frame available to Heihachi. And for 15 frames and onwards, the electric becomes easier and easier to do, as more frames become more and more available on when you can input the first forward input of the electric. Otherwise, if you can't do the electric to punish minus 15, just stick with the down forward 1 2 or the back 3 3. But the other 15 frame punisher that you can do is back forward 2 1, and this is also especially good for punishing those moves with a lot of pushback. And remember, you can also reduce the amount of pushback by neutral blocking instead of holding back. The other 15 frame punisher is forward 2 free. This one is weaker in damage than back forward 2 1, but it has a slightly better range. 
As an added bonus, you also get a guaranteed demon uppercut, as long as you have the execution. But then again, the first hit of forward 2-3 is a high, so it will not be able to cover the moves after cover and crouch. Quarter circle forward 2 is also another option to punish those moves with pushback, but it may take some practice punishing with this because of the awkward quarter circle forward input. And not only that, the move is also launch punishable on block at minus 17. So you're gonna have to be careful to not mess up the punish. So let's now go into the crouching punishers. So for 11 frames, Heihachi can do the tsunami kicks or while standing 4-4 if he wants damage. While Kazuya and Devil Jin's version of this move put them at minus 4 on hit, Heihachi's version is the only one which isn't minus on hit being at 0 frames. If Heihachi wants frame advantage instead, then he can go for only doing the first hit which is only while standing 4. While standing 4 will only give Heihachi 13 damage but in turn, put him at a whopping plus 8 frame advantage. And now for 13 frames, which was formerly for 14 frames before the buff. We have Heihachi's while standing 1, which is like his forward 1 plus 2 because this also guarantees a free quarter circle forward 2 or an omen thunder god fist for a lot of damage. For 14 frames, up to 17 frames, Heihachi has nothing. And that is why the only easy option is to still use while standing 1 all the way up to 17 frames. At 18 frames, Heihachi now has while standing 3 1 plus 2, which is a launcher that gives you a good combo on hit, and it's also minus 14 on block. First, to initiate basic offense, Heihachi has a 1 jab. So like any other 1 jab, this is plus 1 on block and plus 8 on hit. What's good about this is that its range recently got buffed. And this really helps a lot because the 1 jab branches out into many different extensions. So using the plus 1 frame advantage that you get off a blocked 1 jab, Heihachi can then try to frame trap the opponent with his 1-1. One, one. So let us now go to 1-1. One, one. So 1-1 one, one is a very good string if it gets blocked, Heihachi still keeps the momentum by being only at minus 1. And if it hits, then Heihachi is put at plus 8. But a better thing to do is to hit confirm the first two hits, before doing the final hit which is 2. So 1-1-2 one, one, is the entire string. This is very good to do at the wall. Because whenever you get frame advantage or successfully step an opponent's move, it becomes very easy to wall splat the opponent by just hit confirming the 1-1-2. One, one, However, because the final hit of 1-1-2 is launch punishable, you should try to never get the final hit block. 1-2 is another jab string that you can do, and like 1-1, one, one, this is also minus 1 on block. However, 1-2 is not something that you can hit confirm like 1-1 one, one, though. But rather, if you think that the opponent will mash after the 1-2, you can choose to commit to doing the entire 1-2-4 string to launch the opponent for mashing after the 1-2. But use 1-2-4 sparingly because the final hit is a duckable high. So to catch people ducking the 4, Heihachi also has a mid-mix up if he does 1-2-2-1-2. Two, two, two. And by the way, if you want to be creative, you can also cancel the final 1-2 into a sidestep. 1 back 2 is the mid extension of a 1 jab. The mid extension itself will not only cover the opponent ducking after the 1, but it will also cover stepping after the 1. On hit, it puts Heihachi at a massive plus 8 frame advantage. And on block, this is in fact very safe at only minus 2. To add to the confusion, you can also try to delay the second hit. 1 back 2 also has extensions. 1 back 2 1 can be used to catch them pressing buttons after the second hit. However, the last hit is launch punishable on block, so you want to use this sparingly. And 1 back 2 4 can be used to crush lows, however, this is better used as a pressure tool at the wall because it is plus 5 on block. But the last hit is incredibly slow, so it can be interrupted or even step to the left. And the other extension is the rage drive, and we're gonna save that for later. The Electric Wind God Fist, or EWGF for short. But most people, including myself, just like to call it the Electric. The Electric is a very fast whiff punisher which is very good in catching even the smallest whiffs. The Electric could also be used as a keep out move against the players who recklessly come in with their offense. 
The electric is also very safe on block. It leaves Heihachi at a plus 5 frame advantage while also pushing the opponent back. The advantage and pushback that it creates gives Heihachi the opportunity to approach and mix the opponent up. Or if you're fighting a trigger happy opponent, the pushback could be used to create space for them to whiff. At the wall, the electric becomes a very good pressuring tool. You can force the opponent to block the electric to be at a plus 5 frame advantage in their face. But do note that the electric will always have a weakness. One weakness is that it doesn't track sidewalk left very well. But to make it track, all you need to do is to delay the timing or combine it with movement. And yes, the electric is a duckable high, which means you can get ducked and launch if you get too predictable. Heihachi's down forward 1 is his main mid poke from standing. This is a very good down forward 1 in terms of hitbox, range, and frame advantage. This puts Heihachi at a massive plus 9 on hit, and on block it's minus 1, so Heihachi keeps the momentum. So the only thing that you have to watch out for is that the down forward 1 will not crack unless it's at range 0. And the opponent also has to be stepping right or to Heihachi's left side. So other than that, when the opponent is at tip range or if the opponent is stepping left, then the down forward 1 will not track. So to check people mashing after the down forward 1, down forward 1 has extensions. First we have down forward 1 1 which is a high extension. The high is only minus 2 on block. However, sharp opponents can still try to duck this. So to cover them ducking down forward 1 1, Heihachi has down forward 1 2, and you might remember this as Heihachi's 13 frame punisher, which also wall splats on hit. If you don't get the wall splat with a down forward 1 2, but if you still happen to be close to the wall, you still get a free forward forward 2 or demon uppercut. But if not used as a punisher, I'd like to point out that you can also delay the second hit. However, at maximum delay, the string will no longer be a natural combo. And let me remind you again that this is minus 13 on block and also forces crouch, so be careful when fighting characters like Kazuya, Josie, Eddie, and Akuma. Down forward 2 is something that you can get when messing up the input of an electric wind godfist, but on its own, the move is still useful. It's still a fast counter hit launcher which comes out at 15 frames. On block, it's still safe at minus 7. So if down forward 1 is the main mid poke from standing, while standing 4 is the main mid poke from crouching. But it doesn't mean that while standing 4 cannot be done from standing. You can do this from standing if you do it from a crouch dash. Meaning you have to do it as forward neutral down down forward neutral 4. On hit this will put Heihachi at a massive plus 8, and on block this is a bit more minus than down forward 1, being at minus 3. However, it does make up for it by having a bit more pushback, which leaves Heihachi still free to move. Forward 4 is Heihachi's best pressuring mid for people who just want to respect Heihachi's offense. Which is also a good mid to do at the end of a crouch dash. If forward 4 gets blocked, it forces the opponent into a crouch, and Hiyachi is put at a very good plus 4 frame advantage. And if it hits, then the advantage you get becomes plus 7, while still forcing the opponent into a crouch. While on counter hit, it knocks the opponent down for a free dash into the down 4 stomp. Or if you don't want to dash, simply do a down 3. But the real neat thing about this is that, if the forward 4 hits a crouching opponent, this guarantees a free down forward 1 2, which makes forward 4 absolutely destroy duckers at the wall. To confirm the crouch hit, you're gonna have to look at the hit stun. A crouch hit will make the opponent dip their head lower than a regular hit would. The only weakness of forward 4 is that it's slow coming out at 19 frames, and that it's also prone to getting stepped. Forward forward 3 is the other mid that looks like forward 4, but this one is actually a launcher on hit. On block, it's only minus 3, and like a forward 4, it can also be done at the end of a crouch dash. Forward 3 is the long range mid knee. It is a counter hit launcher, but the problem is the move is slow at 18 frames. So you actually want to use this move from far away, because it's slow, you can easily get counter hit. But remember, Heihachi has moves that put him somewhere at plus 8 or plus 9 on hit, which makes this move an uninterruptible follow up. But remember, in this situation, they can still choose to sidewalk left to avoid the forward free. Should they block the forward free, remember that this is only minus 2 on block, which is not much of a frame disadvantage. 
and on regular hit, the Ford Ford 2 Demon Uppercut follow-up is guaranteed. So you get up by holding back, it is even possible to launch them with a well-timed Ford Ford 2. And do note that the second hit of Forward 2 3 is the same as a Forward 3, which means that it still retains the same counter hit property. And also, because the second hit is very delayable, you can scare people into not pressing buttons by just doing Forward 2 all by itself. A Forward 3 4 is Heihachi's Hell Axle, which looks like the first two hits of War Ranks Hunting Hawk. This is a launcher on a regular hit, immediately screwing the opponent upon landing the second hit. And it's also plus 3 on block, which means Heihachi still retains his turn. However, because this move is a slow jumping attack, this move should only be used if you expect the opponent to respect or do a low. So up forward 4 is the other low crush move that you can use other than the Hell Axle. This one is only slightly faster than the Hell Axle at 24 frames, however it only knocks down on both regular and counter hit. However, at the wall it's still wall splats, and it's still safe on block at minus 5. Back 4 is one of Eihachi's homing moves, and this one is a safe mid. This one is low at 18 frames, but this one is very good to use when you find them stepping at the wall. And on counter hit, it also screws the opponent for a nice combo. And it's also a good way to screw the opponent when you get an angled wall splat. Back 1 2 is the faster of Eihachi's homing moves. But this one is different from back 4 being high high. But if the second hit manages to land as a counter hit, then it will launch the opponent. But be careful because it can still get ducked. So to deal with the opponent ducking, one way that you can do is to delay the second hit, hoping that they will do an early punish that you counter hit them with a second hit. Or you can do the mid option instead, by doing back 1 2, 1 plus 2. And yes, this is also safe at minus 6 and you can also cancel it into a sidestep. Back 3-2 is a new addition to Heihachi in Season 4. His string is a high high poke string, which is very safe on block at only minus 1. And the pushback it creates easily sets the opponent up for a whiff punish. But the real good thing about this is that if you condition your opponent enough to mash after the first hit, you can counter hit launch them with a second hit. The first hit isn't really that bad to throw out by itself, because it's only minus 4 on block with the added mind game of the second hit. But do keep in mind that the second hit can still get ducked. And this is when the mid extension comes in. So back 3-3 three, three is the mid mix-up, which puts the opponent at a face down feet away position on hit. And because of this, Heiachi gets some quite good oki. Down 1 will hit every option except holding back into standing block. While down back 3 will hit every option except holding back into crouching block. But if you're absolutely sure that they will get up either by holding back or up, you can just hit them with a quarter circle forward too, for more damage. On block, this move forces crouch, but it's really not that punishable at only minus 12. So this move will not get launched by the likes of Kazuya and Josie. Ford Ford 2 is the demon uppercut, and this is the main reason why people should never ever duck Heihachi. While the move also goes under highs and hits grounded opponents, the Demon Uppercut is very infamous for two things. First is its tracking. It becomes harder to step because the two can be pressed late during the dash, which will allow Heihachi to realign with an already stepping opponent. And second is the pushback on block. While the Demon Uppercut is actually minus 16 on block, there aren't a lot of 16 frame or faster moves in the game that have range, making the Demon Uppercut safe to use versus certain matchups. However, there are only a handful of characters who are able to reliably launch the Demon Uppercut on block. And these are the characters who you need to be aware of when using the move. Back 2 is Heihachi's rather slow wall bounce move coming out at 22 frames. The move itself is actually the same as the second hit of 1 back 2, but the difference this time is that back 2 got buffed in season 2 and became a wall bounce. But their properties on block still remain the same. Like 1 back 2, back 2 is also minus 2 on block. The extension of this move is of course the Rage Drive, which is back to 1 plus 2. And this will be covered in a separate section. Down 1 is a semi-fast mid poke coming out at 16 frames. Heihachi can also choose to recover crouching by holding down after the move. On hit, 
This move doesn't give that much of a frame advantage at only plus 2. But despite that, this move actually hits grounded. And this can also hit certain low stances. On block, it's actually minus 9. But the opponent can still choose to respect the 2 extension. Down 1 2 is the extension. While the extension itself is still interruptible by 10 frame jabs, should they try anything slower than that, the second hit on counter hit will knock the opponent down for a free quarter circle forward 2. Or again, an omen thunder godfist. On block, the second hit is actually a safe mid at minus 9. But other than interrupting the second hit with jabs, they can also step the second hit, so you have to keep that in mind. While standing 2 is a rather slow mid from crouch coming out at 18 frames. It is minus 6 on block and plus 11 on hit, forcing a ballerina stun, and on counter hit, it will launch. So the special property of this move is that it's evasive. So as Heihachi does this, he does a small step to the left to avoid the opponent's attack. So Heihachi can use this move whenever he finds himself at minus and in crouch. Down back 1 plus 2 is probably Heihachi's best evasive move. This move will go under highs and will also go under high hitbox mids. And because of this, this can be used to option select some mix-up situations. On hit, this puts Heihachi at a good frame advantage of plus 5. And on block, it's not really that punishable being at minus 13. Sidestep 2-1 is Heihachi's sidestep launcher. The first hit is actually slow coming out at 19 frames. So this move is actually more useful after stepping something that recovers slow. The first hit is safe at minus 9, and the second hit is delayable, however it is not hit confirmable. And on block, you wanna be careful because this is minus 14, which means Seihachi will get launched by the likes of Brian or Lars. Down forward 1 plus 2 is Seihachi's only power crush. On hit, this power crush guarantees a free crash dash into the demon uppercut. To set this power crush up, remember that it crushes on the 8th frame. And another good thing about this is that it also wall splats. But be careful because this is minus 14 on block. Alright, so we're gonna go to lows. So, let's start with down 4. So down 4 is Heihachi's fastest low, being a universal 12 frame down 4. This is minus 13 on block, crushes size, and also tracks to both sides. So you can use this something like a dick jab that also tracks. And don't think just because this is minus 13 on block, this can be launched by characters with 13 frame while standing launchers. In fact, only Josie can launch this reliably. Other characters such as Kazuya, Eddie, and Akuma cannot launch this because of pushback. Down back 2 is Seihachi's main power low. This also high crushes but it doesn't crush immediately because the crush window starts from the 8th frame. On hit, this does a chunky 25 damage, puts Seihachi at plus 6, and forces the opponent into crouch. But the only downside is that this is launch punishable on block at minus 18, and it doesn't track very well to Heihachi's right side. Heihachi's cell sweep crouch dash 4 is different from Kazuya's and Devil Jin cell sweep. First of all, because it doesn't immediately knock down or launch the opponent at the very first hit. And Heihachi's cell sweep is also the only remaining tracking cell sweep till this day. If Heihachi's Hell Sweep lands as a regular hit, Heihachi can choose to get a plus 8 frame advantage, or a mix up between another Hell Sweep, which is done by not releasing the down forward while still tapping 4, and the neutral 4 extension, which is similar to a while standing 4. The neutral 4 extension is what you need to do to combo off any Hell Sweep that manages to trip the opponent. Or you can also pick up on reaction by simply following up with a Crouch Dash 4 neutral 4 on its own. The first Hell Sweep will only trip on counter hit, while the Hell Sweep that lands after another Hell Sweep will always trip on hit. But players just often combo off the second Hell Sweep since getting a counter hit off the first Hell Sweep is less likely to happen. The first Hell Sweep is launch punishable on block like every other Hell Sweep, but the second and third Hell Sweep are only minus 10 on block. So this means that they are only punishable with a dick jab. The other extensions of the Hell Suite, which are the Neutral 4-4, Tsunami Kick extension, and the 1 Thunder God Fist extension, are very unsafe to do in the neutral, and that is why it is only recommended to do them in combos. Full Crouch Down Forward 4 is the other big low that Heihachi can do, but this one comes from Full Crouch, and like Down Back 2, this one is also launch punishable on block at minus 23. 
and if you manage to hit someone with this, you get a free forward forward 2 or demon uppercut. And another bonus is that if they try to get up while you're about to hit them with a demon uppercut, then the demon uppercut will launch them. Forward 3 plus 4 is a Hachi's Raiden stance, which is also a punch parry. The parry window is active during the 5th frame up to the 12th frame, which allows Hachi to still be able to parry jabs when he's at minus 5 at worst. When the punch parry is successful, Heihachi can do Raijin 1 to launch opponents in the open ground. Or Raijin 2 1 to wall spot opponents at the wall. There is actually a method to make the punch parry safer by making the Raijin stance move only come out during a successful parry. By default, the stance could be cancelled into a sidestep by buffering either an up or down input. Doing so will make Heihachi do a sidestep as soon as he finishes doing the Raijin step. But an easier way would be to use the diagonal inputs that are closest to the forward direction. You can step to the background by buffering up and forward, and you can step to the foreground by buffering down and forward. But because of the way the hand is shaped, it is easier to pull the down forward diagonal than it is to push the up forward diagonal. And that is why I recommend buffering down and forward unless you plan on stepping into the background. So right after buffering down and forward, that is also the time when you immediately press the attack button. So you want to press 1 if you want Raijin 1. Or 2-1 if you want Raijin 2-1. Because the buttons are pressed before Heihachi actually does the sidestep, the Raijin stance move will not come out, should the opponent not throw a punch. And afterwards, the sidestep can just be immediately cancelled into a block by holding back. Let us now go to Heihachi's throw game. First, Heihachi has a 1 plus 2 break throw, which is the Stonehead forward forward 1 plus 2. At the wall, this actually wall splats for a nice combo. In the open ground, they can choose to tech roll or not. If they just stay on the ground, you can do a dash into a down 4 stomp. Or if you don't want to dash, you can always do a down 3. But if they do tech roll, you get a free mix up. And by the way, you can also buffer this throw off a crouch dash. Down forward 2 plus 3 is Heihachi's 2 break throw. This one is a different kind of throw because it doesn't knock down. But rather, it gives you plus 7 on hit. So this gets you a free mix up after it hits. If you want to piss them off, you can even do another throw. For Heihachi's 1 break throw, he has broken toy. Quarter circle forward 1 plus 3. This throw has a different animation than a regular throw, and it comes out at 15 frames. Heihachi will actually use one arm to grab his opponent and throw them to his right side. If Heihachi throws them to a wall, then the throw will do more damage. Alright, so let's now talk about Rage. First off, the command for Heihachi's Rage Art is down 1 plus 2. So you want to use it in the neutral to armor through the opponent's move. Or use it in the end of combos. But if you only want to boost your combo damage using Rage, the Rage Drive is better to use for that purpose. Which now brings us to Heihachi's Rage Drive. Heihachi's first Rage Drive is Back 2 1 plus 2. And this is an extension of the wall bounce move the Back 2. The Rage Drive will launch the opponent on hit, in which you will need to do Crash Dash 4 Neutral 4 to pick them up. However, this Rage Drive jails starting off the Back 2, so you can never use this Rage Drive to launch people who mash after a blocked Back 2. If you still want to launch them for mashing buttons, you can do that off the second rage try, which is 1 back 2, 1 plus 2. Because the back 2 off the 1 back 2 is delayable, this becomes very good in catching people pressing after the 1 jab. And not only that, the entire string is also a natural combo and counter hit, which means Heachi has access to a 10 frame counter hit launcher whenever he has rage. However, if both rage drives get blocked, the headbutt, which is the last hit, is massively plus on block, being plus 9. So you will find most opponents not wanting to press buttons after blocking this. But if they do, of course you can go for frame traps. And yes, you can use rage drives in the end of a combo to boost the overall damage. The back 2 1 plus 2 is usually done after screwing the opponent in the middle of a combo. While the 1 back 2 1 plus 2 is usually done when the screw was already used in the beginning. 
Usually after you do the crouch dash 441 after the screw, you can follow that up with a one back too, when without rage. But with rage, you can add the final hit which is the headbutt. The headbutt in both rage tries will spike them to the ground for a guaranteed down force stomp. Or if you want more damage, you can go for the Omen Thunder God Fist. Alright people, so we're now in the combo section, so I tried to simplify this as much as I can, so the way this is going to work is I'm going to show you a set of launchers first, and then after that I'm going to show you combos that work with those launchers.
Alright people, thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. This is my first ever Heihachi guide, so I hope that I put everything that you need to pick up and play Heihachi. If you do like it, leave a like, comment down below, or even subscribe. Share this video to your friends who might want to try Heihachi out. And yes, if you want me to do a tutorial of what you see on screen right now, I can do that. Just tell me in the comments below. Of course, a special thanks to my patrons who keep supporting me and making content like this, even though I'm a busy guy who just likes to make Tekken content just for fun. Again, thank you for watching.